A little over a year ago, there was a certain champion that was released in the game that caused a lot of controversy among the player base, Aphelios. He was conceived by certainly T, also known for designing a lot of really dynamic and popular champions like Darius, Thresh, and Yasuo, as well as some reworks like Mordekaiser, Warwick, and Akali. Anyone who's been around for a while is privy to the running trend of new champions being made to have some sort of unique gimmick, and this has been occurring ever since the total revamp of Summoner's Rift in early Season 5. Some recent examples would be Viego, whose gimmick is all about transforming into enemy champions he takes down and allowing him to use their abilities for a short period of time. Yumi attaches herself to an allied champion and provides very powerful buffs to their stats such as movement speed, attack speed, adaptive force, as well as supportive tools like slows, roots, heals, and shields. We have Silas who's all about stealing ultimates and using them as his own, the one function Viego is unable to replicate. Zoe can duplicate your summoner spells every time you use them, meaning if you use flash, she can also flash too. And then there's Aphelios, arguably the most confounding and confusing champion in the game. In fact, to this day, a big portion of the player base still has trouble discerning what he's doing at any given point in time, leading to the creation of this video. Now despite what the thumbnail might have you believe, this is not an Aphelios guide or anything of the sort, but he will be a big part of it because I wanted to discuss confusing champions dissecting why so many players are not only having a hard time figuring out what he does, but why they straight up just don't even want to try. With any product, be it a physical thing such as a bicycle or a digital thing such as a video game, the ultimate goal of user experience design is to make it as brainless as possible to interact with. Now, just to clarify, I say brainless in the sense that the user should not have to think too hard to use it, not to make the implication that people are stupid. Most of them anyway. Needless to say, depending on the complexity of the product, it may not be possible to reach that level of intuitiveness. But the idea is to get as close to being a no-brainer to use as is feasible. Where this ties in with League of Legends is in the champions, being the in-game characters you operate whenever you log into play. And despite its really intricate gameplay, League is actually quite simple to play in the bare essence of its controls. You have a passive, 3 basic abilities, an ultimate, 2 summoner spells, and 6 item slots. You move around the rift by right-clicking and select targets by left-clicking, and to recall to base, you press the B button. It's pretty intuitive. The rest of usability lies in the interactions between characters, namely the abilities. What the ability says it does, how it looks, and what the ability actually does, especially in reference to other game elements. These three points are intended to serve as a checklist of sorts to achieve clarity. To give you an example of what I mean by that, let's take a look at Jin, one of the best design champions in the game in terms of user experience and gameplay. Each of Jin's abilities have distinct functions, interactions, and appearances, right down to the passive. The first three shots don't look like anything special, but when he's arming his fourth bullet, not only do you see the last one loaded under his health bar in purple, but he starts twirling his gun around while it's glowing. There's a clear change in his walking animation when he's about to dispatch you to the hereafter, then followed by a 360 no-scope shot. His Q is pretty subtle on launch, but Dancing Grenade can easily be understood by going against it a few times. The canister itself changes color every time it kills a target, and depending on how far away each target is, the bounce can take a long time to reach, which makes sense physically speaking. Deadly Flourish has a clear line downward followed by an equally fancy animation on Jin. In exchange for having extremely long range, the attack has a very narrow hitbox and a long cast time, balancing the ability. Captive Audience's Lotus Traps do immense damage but have a very bright and rather long animation to let you know to get out of the circle as quickly as possible lest you suffer excruciating pain. And finally, his ultimate curtain call creates a very wide cone in front of him with four bullets in quick succession of each other. If it hasn't become apparent already, everything comes in fours. Four auto attacks, four enemies hit with a grenade, four shots of his ultimate. Everything about Jin is conspicuous, clear, and easy to understand, and he's considered a pretty complex champion. In spite of the growing number of gimmicky and crazy characters, most of them are quite easy to figure out after having played against them a few times. But recently, it's gotten more difficult to discern what a champion is doing with newer releases, especially as champions can do more than what three abilities and an ultimate would suggest. While there's nothing wrong with going above and beyond the status quo, it's important to implement them in a way that still reflects the current user experience framework of whatever already exists in the game. A mild example of overlooking this would be Seraphine. While there's nothing particularly convoluted about her abilities, her animations aren't very pronounced between each other which makes it hard to distinguish what she's using at any point in time. Because she fires using projectiles, her character model doesn't move around all too much. In fact, unless you're paying close attention to her, it's hard to tell whether she's using high note or beat drop. 
Speaking of Beat Drop, it has a special property where it roots targets already slowed and stuns targets already rooted. But since they look exactly the same, most of the time you can't tell which one you'll be hit by unless it's the only attack coming towards you. So now that I laid down some of the background information, let's actually talk about Aphelios. The first and most notable aspect of his gameplay that makes him hard to figure out is that he has too many abilities, far beyond that of any other champion. Even though he completely lacks a conventional E and W, Aphelios essentially carries 15 different abilities. For starters, he has 5 passives, one for each weapon he has, which requires you to understand what each of his 5 weapons do. Even if you were to simplify them all, that's still 5 different things to account for. While there are icons next to his health bar to show you which weapons he's currently using, at a quick glance it's hard to tell what he's using in the heat of battle, as only Gravitum is easy to notice because he carries a purple glowing orb. The rest of his weapons all blend in with his character model either through color or shape. Calibrum and Crescendum have the same color as his coat. Infernum is a more silvery blue color but it still fits in with this palette of a teal, blue, and gray scheme. Severum does carry a red blade but it also has a gray hilt. What makes this even harder to tell for his opponents is that Aphelios can switch between two weapons at no cost and a very low cooldown meaning you not only have to track what primary weapon he has armed but what his secondary weapon is, which can be even harder to notice. On top of that, each one has different attack properties. Infernum, Gravitum, and Severum are the simplest since they're just permanent basic attack modifiers. Infernum sort of has a Titanic Hydra effect, Gravitum is basically Frozen Mallet, and Severum is a Vamp Scepter. That's about it. But Calibrum and Crescentum have different interactions based on what his offhand weapon is, which can get really confusing to calculate as an opponent. Each of these weapons not only have different passive effects but different cues, meaning you have to account for 5 abilities, adding even more details you have to look out for. Calibrum and Gravitum are easy to get because the former is a long range shot and the latter roots anyone currently slowed by his basic attacks. But this is where things get really convoluted. Severum's onslaught attacks using both Severum and his offhand weapon, meaning you could be getting hit by two of any of his five weapons in quick succession. Infernum's Dusk Wave damages all enemies in a cone and then throws a follow-up attack based on his offhand weapon. Bear in mind, this happens all in the span of half a second. Lastly, Crescentum's Sentry spawns a turret that attacks with his offhand weapon. Oh, and did I mention, he can swap his weapon while this turret is active. So you have to account for basically two Aphelioses attacking with a different weapon at a time. Now for most people, this is first grade math, anyone can figure this stuff out. He's not quite intricate enough, so let's give him five different ultimates. Moonlight Vigil fires a huge projectile with different properties based on the weapon he's carrying, so all the more reason you have to look out for what his offhand weapon is as well, because he could be using Infernum but then quickly swap to Severum to use his ultimate and then swap back. And honestly, I don't think I even can explain his 5 different ultimates because at this point I pretty much forgot what I was saying for the past 3 minutes. Even if you know every single one of Aphelios' abilities, it's really hard to tell which one he's using at any point in time because his character model and weapons are so inconspicuous that it's hard to tell what he's going to do, let alone the fact that he has 15 different abilities, more if you count the various combinations of said abilities. Some might say he's not the first of his kind to have different forms, so to speak. Yes, we have champions that have two forms like Chase, Elise, Nidalee, Gnar, Rek'Sai, and Kled to some extent, but what separates Aphelios from them, aside from having 15 abilities compared to 6, is that you can easily tell what form they take just by looking at them. Nidalee, Elise, and Nar literally transform into a cougar, spider, and a giant raging kaiju thingamaduhiki respectively, so you can compartmentalize what they will do simply by looking at them. Jace carries a giant hammer which is as big as he is, and whenever he transforms, not only does his weapon change but so does his stance, making it very clear which mode he's in. Also, none of their abilities interact with their opposite form, aside from maybe Nidalee Spear and Trap making her Cougar Q and W stronger. Why people are so frustrated with Aphelios' design is that he looks very unimposing as a character, yet can do so many different things in very quick succession, all without clear visual indicators, making it extremely difficult to keep up with him when facing against him. I'm not saying that every champion needs to have Looney Tunes animations with comically oversized fists and crazy explosions, but if they have a lot of different abilities that can do a lot of different things, it's important to make them distinct from each other to prevent confusion, so people can actually tell the difference between a Q or a W or an E. Humorously enough, the newest champion Viego actually has some pretty good user experience despite having potential access to every single ability in the game. And that's because his basic abilities have no interactions with those that he assimilates. It's not like his Q changes based on what champion he's stealing. And whenever he is possessing a champion, there's a long animation that plays out to show you that he's about to transform. 
On the other hand, someone else who does have changing abilities based on a specific metric is Kiana, but the only thing that changes is her Q. Her basic attacks, E, and ultimate all remain the same. Also, the difference between Kiana and Aphelios is that she has to manually pick up an element using Terra Shape before she can use Edge of Ixtal. Although it does happen quickly, it's still easy to see her absorbing an element. Most importantly, Kiana's Hula Hoop changes color based on the element she has. Not only is it bigger than her own body, but it glows very brightly, giving a clear visual indication. I understand for certain characters, subterfuge may be part of their gameplay, and that's fine. Champions like Shaco and LeBlanc are designed to deceive and trick players. Not every champion needs to publicly declare what they're doing or have really long animations, especially if they're assassins. They're supposed to be quick and fast so they can catch people off guard. But at least with them, you only have to worry about three basic abilities, a passive, and an ultimate. That's it. Aphelios would be perfectly fine if hypothetically he had only two weapons, because then the whole main hand offhand mechanic wouldn't be nearly as convoluted to figure out. It's due to him having five weapons that there's simply too much on one champion with too unnoticeable of a difference between them that makes him such a problem to figure out. Why this matters so much is because it creates dissonance between him and other champions. It's hard to imagine that Garen and Aphelios are characters from the same game. When adding a new system or mechanic to other games, usually it applies to all currently existing characters and elements. For example, if in another game the developers decide to raise the level cap from 100 to 120, it's in their best interest to give that level cap increase to all characters. But if you were to say only allow one character to reach 120, it ruins the experience for every other character because now that 120 character is the only one worth playing since they're the only one who can get that high. If you're thinking right now this sounds a lot like power creep, you're exactly right. But in competitive games, power creep is relative. After all, ever since Aphelios' release, he's been nerfed so badly that he's for all intents and purposes pretty weak right now. It's not so much power creep he brings, but feature creep, where Riot is pushing the boundaries of what a champion can have further and further, which ordinarily is a good thing, but it needs to be handled with caution because it sets a precedent for future releases. When you impose constraints and parameters for a game's development, it's okay to expand on it gradually. But I think the reason players were so thrown off by him was that he came as such a shock. There were really complex and gimmicky champions before him such as Silas, Talia, and Aurelian Soul, but none of them made people genuinely say out loud, I have no idea what this champion does. I mostly wanted to talk about how Riot can use Aphelios as an example of how being too adventurous with designing a champion can lead to more confusion than enjoyment. Again, it's perfectly fine to innovate and try new things with new releases, but for the sake of being prudent, best to optimize the user experience before trying anything fancy. If you enjoyed this video, a rating would be much appreciated, and if you'd like to see more content like this, consider subscribing to the channel. Also check out the video description down below for links to my Discord and social media, as well as a playlist containing all my discussion videos if you'd like to watch more. But for now, that's it for today. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for the next one. Take care.